my dad uh, was a famous Blackhawk. Uh, he uh, won the Norris Trophy three times. He uh, won the Stanley Cup once. Well, when I'm asked that question, who my dad is, I say he's my dad. That's the first answer. But to most other people, he is a famous hockey player. And I kind of knew him more as a dad before I knew him as a hockey player kind of thing. He's in the Hockey Hall of Fame, and he won three Norris trophies during that time, and a Stanley Cup in 1961. My name is Pierre Pollard. Uh, middle name is Paul. I was born in Kenogamy, Quebec in 1931. I spoke French till I was 12 years old. Then we moved to Fort Erie and started learning English. Now it was a town, a paper mill town, where uh, there was a track running, railroad track running through the town. And on one side of the track uh, were English people and they work at the mill. And the mill was owned by uh, English people. Of course, on this side of the track, it was us. And once in a while, you know, we always threw rock at each other. So I guess the first word I learned is, come on and fight, eh? Well, enforcer, perhaps, what they say now, but he was in a lot of fights and, um, you know, protecting players, and plus he was a defenseman. Basically, you know, he was just a, a kid that came from northern Quebec to Fort Erie in the uh, late 40s, I guess, uh, when he was about 15 years old, and, um, uh, out of a passion, started playing hockey with no real training, just trying out and and wanted to make teams, wanted to uh, excel at things, and uh, just went about and went about and did it. I went to practice uh, with the junior B in Fort Erie, and they were they were in the playoff. It, you know, I just asked if I could go on the ice, so we went on the ice, me and my line mate, and I scored about three goals in the practice, and after the practice, I went up to the coach, and I says, hey, did I make the club? And the fella says, well, look, uh, hey, you're pretty good, but he says, we don't need forward, we need defensemen. I said, okay. When I started playing hockey, they asked me if I could uh, play with them again, and I said, well, yes. I, I will if you let me play defense. So that's how I switched over to defense. And uh, then Rudy Pillis kind of came over to our house and asked me to try over this junior A in St. Catherine and from St. Catherine, Buffalo. And that's how I got, that's how it happened. He used to study guys. I remember one time we moved into a newer subdivision, right? And, um, Dad, what are you doing standing there watching that guy dig the ditch? I, I go, he says, because i got to dig the ditch in the backyard next weekend, and I'm watching how efficient he is. I go, what do you mean? He says, look at the guy's digging the ditch. It's like, it's like a work of art. I says, hmm, okay. And I'm sure that's how he made it in uh, hockey. He called it picking people's brains. Um, basically, that's listening to people and um, seeing their movements and, and their intentions and um, gaining knowledge from how they gone through something that, that you could learn from. I, I call myself a copier, okay, and I would remember how to. So in the NHL, I probably uh, start copying a couple players, whether they were um, forwards, centermen, defensemen. But the big move uh, when I was in Buffalo, there was, um, I used to play left side defense. So when I, uh, this coach came to us in Buffalo, his, uh, his name was Frankie Edels. Uh, he wanted to play with me because I had the young leg and he was in his 30. 
So he said to me, he said, look, Pierre, he says, you play with me, but you play on the right side. I said, well, I never played on the right side. So he was pretty smart. He said, look, Pierre, I, he said, why don't you want to play on the right side? I said, well, because I don't shoot right. I shoot left. Oh, well, he says, you know what? Uh, this fellow in Montreal, his name is Doug Harvey. He shoots left, but he plays right. And I'm starting to think he's, he was the best defenseman in the league. Eh? I said, oh, yeah. So guess what? I started copying him. He'd study people and learn how to do whatever task they were good at. So he uh, uh, learned how to become a defenseman because that's what role needed to be filled. On Sundays when I got older, I used to go to the hockey games. And we used to sit beside my dad on a little bench that was right beside the big bench. And it was really cool because my dad, being a defenseman, most of the time he was coming in and out of that gate. So I literally was like four or five feet from him all the time and all this stuff was going on in the ice. And so you'd, you'd see some of the, uh, a lot of the drama happen right from the bench. When we went to the games, um, I would, you know, fans would come and get my dad's autograph and I'd wait till everybody was gone and I'd say to him, could I have your autograph? And I would do that over all the time. I remember him being on the ice. I remember going on the ice in Chicago. Um, I have some uh, very, you know, magical childhood moments like most children would. Um, and we, um, we got to do some fun things. Didn't seem like it was anything out of the normal. It's kind of hard in the neighborhood not for people to know because uh, part of a promotion for, you know, local dealerships was uh, uh, they'd give my father a, a, a brand new Plymouth uh, Fury 3 with Blackhawk Star Car <laughs> written on the side of it. So, so everybody in the new neighborhood knew who we were. Yeah, I think I was very, um, still, I'm very proud of my dad and I would have, um, I think when I was younger, I, I would have shared that with uh, friends. I was kind of embarrassed by the attention, sort of. And so I never really said anything to much later where people would, you know, be interested in hockey or say something. You, uh, you're happy the first time. And the second time, you kind of say, well, I deserve it, you know, and the third time, yeah, I deserve it. But then I came second three times, and I said, oh, I really deserved it, but, uh, you know. But uh, they were th goals that I set for myself, eh? And, but not thinking all the time about it, just trying to play my best. That's, that's what it was. It's uh, still an honor, like, you know, to say that I won three and came second three times. And especially when I started so late in my career, like, you know, I didn't play organized hockey till I was 17. My reaction was kind of, uh, I really played well. I think I came to the top of my game at that time, but it took two or three days to sunk in. I, I, didn't, I didn't jump up in the air and threw my hat around and just oh, really get excited. Uh, it took two or three days, and I finally realized what I had accomplished because I was really kind of wired to be, uh, have confidence, don't play with too much stress. Uh, and I really, I really played well. I was the leading scorer. Yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, yeah, going back, you know, that's pretty good. <laughs> and I remember in 1975, he was inducted in the Hall of Fame. And we have got all dressed up and went for the event. Now, the event wasn't as large as some of the events now, but to us it was huge, and it was a great honor for him to be put in after so many years. There was an allotment. And then came the hanging of the sweater. That was huge. And I don't want to cry, because <laughs> it's very emotional. But I think that's the best. It was really significant that he did play hockey because I, at that point, really didn't, um, I guess, appreciate. I really think that I was fortunate uh, to be gifted with the uh, 
body that had the ability and uh, to move on and do all the things I've done. And I, I really think that a lot of it is kind of, I, I would call it luck or fortunate, you know, but being at the right place, the right time, doing the right thing, because there's an awful lot of fork on the road and you gotta take the right, the right one. The first one I won, it was not a trophy, it was a plaque. Oh, okay. Guess what? That didn't cost any money. The next year, I said, I don't need a plaque, I like to have a miniature trophy. You know what they said to me? It cost you 50 bucks. So I paid 50 bucks. <laughs> no shit. <laughs> 50 bucks. <laughs> Isn't that something? Then the next year, I won again, I had to give up 50 bucks. <laughs> 